In today's tutorial, we're learning how to make this spin the wheel animation, whereas if you click the central button, it will start spinning. And if you click again, it will stop at the number. So this is a random number generator in PowerPoint that you can create with the standard animations that are available. Everything you see here is available in PowerPoint itself. And it's also possible not to just do it with numbers, but you can also easily change it to different names. And in a few clicks, you can easily change it to different numbers or add pie charts wherever you need. So it's a very flexible way to pick numbers or names or any topic that you like. If you like this style of presentation, I have made a full slide deck available in this color theme. So if you're interested in that one, make sure to click the link in the description below. This tutorial I've split up into three parts. First, we're looking at making the wheel. Secondly, we'll look at the animation part. And thirdly, we'll look at customization process. So how you can change it from numbers to names and add or remove some pies from the chart. If you want to follow along in the tutorial, this is the color palette that I've used. So you can pause the video and add it to your presentation right now. And we're starting from a blank slide. Now first we want to change the color theme. So go to the design tab, variance, and here we want to choose our color palette. I'm using this future purple of which you have the color codes. Right click, format background, and let's give this a nice gradient fill. I'm using the radial version and one of the bottom ones here with the lighter, with the lighter center. If you want it a bit more emphasized, you can always choose a lighter color, color for the center and then just play around with the positioning of the stops. I think this one will look quite good for our design. Next, we want to add the Wheel of Fortune. So go to Insert, Charts and choose 2D Pie Chart. Add it to the slide and this will give you a pre-filled pie chart with some standard data. Click on Edit Data in Excel to go to the source file of the data. Here we have two columns. First one is the name or the category, and the second one is the amount of sales. For us, the sales is going to be all the number one, because this means that all the pies in the chart will be equal sized. So let's drag it down to, let's say 12 numbers. So we go to line number 13, because we have the title here. And then for the numbers, we're going to change it to one through 12. So we can drag it down as well. Now let's jump back into PowerPoint. And here we can see that the data has updated itself. So the pie charts are now equally sized and that is what we want. I'm going to select the pie chart, go to quick layout and then choose layout number five. And this will add the little numbers. So the names of each tag to the pie. The title we don't need. So I'm going to remove that one. And this also means that if you select those numbers, this is pulling it from the Excel. So we're not manually adding them. It's pulling the data from the Excel which means if you add names instead of numbers, that also works. For the formatting of those numbers, you can just use the regular way. So let's go for Montserrat. Subfont, we're choosing a extra bold, make it white and increase it in font size to about 28 in our case. Now you can also design the colors of the chart. So I don't like this randomness in the colors. So I'm going to select one of the pies. Now you can see the entire pie chart is selected. If I click one of the pies again, it will give me the selection. So with those three little points, that shows number one is selected. Right click, format data point. Same thing, go to the first fill options and give it a solid fill with that light bright color. I'm going to match it up with the other side. So numbers one and number seven are going to be the same colors. That is just a personal style preference. Click on number two and give that the darker color. Match it on the opposite side with the eight and also make that darker. And then I'm just going to continue the entire process until I have everything filled in as I like. Of course, you can use more colors than two, but for this example, I'm just using two colors and using them interchangeably. I think this gives quite a nice consistent design. It's of course also possible to make one number jump out. So let's say you want to make one gold number, that is also possible. But in our case, we're just going for an equal balance here. Select the pie chart, and then you can also change the border of the pie chart with that lighter color. It's a small change, but I think it adds to quite some nice effect on the slide. You can increase the border size if you wanted a more thick line. I'm going to stay with the standard version here. Now let's make the rest of the outline of our wheel. So we go to, sh we go to shapes, and then we want to choose this donut shape. Hold shift and drag it on the screen to create a perfect circle and place it in the middle of your design. So once these guidelines show up, you know it's perfectly in the middle. 
you have this little handle here to reduce the size of the donut and I'm going to match it with the outline of that pie chart. For the donut shape, I'm going to make it that almost white color and no outline. If you want to make it smaller, that is also possible. You can just hold the control shift key to equally size it from the center. So that looks quite good. Now let's maybe add some few elements to the slide here. So circle, again, hold the shift key. Let's not make it too large and place it on the outside border. Go to gradient fill. And for this one, I think we can choose a light version. Let's try one of those, no outline. It gives like the light effect or like a, a colorful light. Let's control shift and copy it to the bottom. Place it on that side, hold control to create a copy again and just drag it to the different corners. I'm going to place one at each side. So every intersection between the two pies and I'm just going to complete it for the entire circle. Hold control shift and that will give some guidelines that is always useful to position everything correctly. And then one more. And this way we have a nicely designed Wheel of Fortune. I'm going to select the different lights. So I'm dragging and holding shift to select the lines or to select little dots, hold shift and click on the outer wheel. And that one we want to right click and group together. So this acts as one shape. Now we want to add a few more elements. So the button in the center. And for that, I'm going to shapes, circle, drag it on the screen and place it in the middle. If you're not sure about the middle, you can always align, align to center, align and align to middle to have a perfect positioning. I'm going for a gradient fill on this one. Let's make it a bit lighter. Let's try this and an outline. We're using that a light font or light, light border. Increase it in size and let's add a icon. For the icon, we want a hand and the click functionality. So let's see if we can find this one in a complete fill that there we go. Center to the middle and this will serve as our start and stop button. Give it a light fill and also select both right click and group them together. So they act as one group as well. Now, a final touch is the marker on the side. And for that, we're choosing the triangle, drag it on the screen, hold shift, rotate 90 degrees, and then place it in the middle on the left or wherever you want to put it. I'm going to go for a bold color and no outline. Maybe give it a slight drop shadow. So format shape, go to the second tab, give it a shadow and a drop shadow. You can increase the blur and play around with the transparency. Now, of course, we want to layer this behind the outer ring. So we're going to select the outer ring and bring to front. This way it's sort of in between and that looks quite good. So now we have created the wheels of the Wheel of Fortune. Now let's look at the animation part. So for that, we're selecting the pie chart. You can see it. We move this part or we can move this part separately. So we select only the pie chart, go to animations. And here we want to go for emphasis effects. Click on the arrow and we want to choose spin. This way we can see it rotates in one go. Open the animation pane. And now we're going to look for the effect options, timings and triggers. For the effect options, we want to make sure that it's all unchecked. So we don't want smooth start or smooth end. And if you want to change the rotation, I'm going to go for clockwise that is possible here. Then in the timing section, you want to do it on click. The duration, I'm going to set it to one second. So this is per spin, one second per spin. And the repeat, I'm going to put until next click. And now the most important part is the trigger or when the animation should start playing. We don't want it part of the click sequence, but we want it to happen on a click. And for that, we want to select the group item or the button in the middle. So in this case, it's group 20. If you want to see which grouped item that is, you can always open up the selection pane. And for that, you can go to the home tab, arrange and open the selection pane. And here we can sort of name the labels. So group 20, this is the outer ring triangle that is clear group 24. That is the middle ring. So that's the let's call it button and then the chart. That is the yeah, of course, the pie chart. So those are now the three objects or the four objects that we have outer ring, triangle, the middle button, and the pie chart. 
Now if we then go back to the animations pane, we can select the chart animation. And here, of course, we chose the wrong one, so it's good that we checked. We want to have the button selected. So it starts as soon as you click on the button. Now let's already see what that gives. So here we can see that the cursor, it changes as soon as it hovers over the button. And if I click the button, it will start spinning. But now it's not ending. So if I click it again, it will not end. And if I click next on the somewhere else on the slide, it will go to a black screen. So now we want to make sure that it stops at a certain point. And for that, we select the pie chart again. We go to entrance effects and we click on appear. In the animation pane, we want to drag it below. So after the trigger, and then we want to go to triggers or click sequence when clicked on the button. And now let's preview. So as soon as we hover over, you see it changes, click and it will start rotating for as long as you want. And then as soon as you click again, it will stop. And here you can see it stopped at number 11. You can click it again, so you don't have to go back or forth. And you can click once more. Now it's on 10. Now it's going in sequence. It's just random. But if I click once more, now it's on 3. So this is how the spinning animation works. Now let's add a few design elements. So if you want to give some more information on the slide, let's create a duplicate version. Scroll backwards. Let's close these for now. Select everything and put it to the right side. Then let's put some text on the slide, text box. And we can type in spin the wheel. Let's give it a font Montserrat, make it white, increase it in size and maybe go for a bolder sub font, extra bold, right click, format shape, and then go to the shadow and add a small shadow here. Maybe a few ticks larger. There we go. You can also change the font color if you want to have a bit of consistency between the little arrow here and the word. And then you can also add some information or explanation below with some dummy text. So let's add some dummy text. The font, we change it to Montserrat. And let's go for a light sub font, make it white and a bit smaller. This could be your explanation, the rules that you want to add. Maybe that's too much text, you can reduce it. And here we go. And if you then preview it on full screen, it will still work. And you can just click and click again to have it stop. Now let's have a look at how we can customize this. So let's say you have 12 options and for some reason you want to change it to 14 or 16. You can just select the pie chart data go to chart design, edit data in Excel, and this will take you back to the Excel file. Now you can just select both columns and drag them downwards. So let's make it 16 and then jump back into PowerPoint and you'll see that the numbers have been added. You might need to tweak it a little bit with the formatting. So let's continue that dark and light sequence. There we go. And then if we preview again, everything still works and remains the same. So depending on how many numbers you have or names, you can easily change it in this way and the animations will always work. Now let's say you don't want the numbers, but you want to change it to names. That is also possible. You select the pie chart, go to chart design, edit data in Excel. And here you can type in the different names. So let's type in a few as an example, John, Max, Maria, Lisa, Tom, let me just quickly add some names to the slide. And here we can see that the names are a bit scattered all over. You just select one or click the names once. So all of them are selected, reduce the font size, and they will nicely match in the different pie charts that we have. So also here you can just spin the wheel and then press the button again to stop it at a specific name. So this one is a random name generator or random name picker in PowerPoint. It's a pretty cool effect that you can use in creative way. So this is how you make this really cool wheel of fortune effect in PowerPoint with these simple animations that are existing in the tool. Thanks a lot for watching and if you want to learn more about PowerPoint make sure to drop a follow and watch the video on the screen right now.